Good morning, God damn it. I feel like a real fucking idiot. I've done a set of barbell over presses. No, I didn't record it. I didn't realize the recording wasn't happening. So basically, um, one of my dumbbells broke. I don't know how. It wasn't me. It was one of my clients. I had like a 12 hour session a shift the other day and someone broke it. <laughs> so I'd say, it's fine. It's all good. I'll fix it. But I thought, fuck it, since that's broken, I'll do a barbell overhead press. I haven't done a barbell overhead press in six months because of the bicep tear. Uh, just did a set. It wasn't too bad, actually. I got 60 kilos for 12 reps. I'm going to do a second set um, and see what happens. But hell, I might even get more reps in the second set just because the neurological adaptations are so, like, I've, a lot of the strength I've lost on this is neurological. My shoulders aren't that much smaller or fundamentally weaker than they were six months ago. Six months ago, I think I was doing 75 for 10, three rep max with 90 kilos. Might have had more than that, I'm not sure, whatever. So I've lost 15 kilos of strength, but a little bit of that is like straight muscular size and strength from you know, recovering from the injury and not being able to train delts properly. But uh, a lot of it's also neuro neurological, so this should come back pretty quick. I'm hoping to be back to 75 kilos, I don't know, month, month or two from now. And then my delts will be back to square even, hopefully. Uh, the idea is going to be that I start with barbell overhead press for the first set of overhead presses. And then the second set of overhead presses, I'll go over to dumbbells and do one arm at a time unilateral. Because this arm is quite a bit weaker, a little, not quite a bit, a tiny bit weaker in the shoulder press variation. Less stability, a little bit less force. I could feel it when I was doing the overhead press. I feel like I could do more weight, but this left arm is limiting me. So that way I don't facilitate any more muscular imbalance. Anyway, that's it. It was all right. I'm not too fussed about this. I think I'm doing in between sets in the moment because it's so cold in my shed. It's like minus two degrees. It's my fucking camera. Yeah, all right. It's so cold in the shed right now. It's like minus two degrees. So in between sets and during my warm ups, to stay warm or when I'm just trying to warm up, you know, warming up with weights doesn't get my heart rate up enough. It's, I'm just too fit. But in between sets, I'll just do sort of shadow boxing at like a good pace, just moving around, just shadow boxing, getting my heart rate up, getting my shoulders and, and hips, you know, loosened up and moving. It's a great warm up. It's fun. I don't like dynamic warm ups with bands and shit like kettlebells. And I just like just moving around, getting my heart rate up, uh, moving my body around. And that way I'm less likely to get injured. Uh, you get more force production too if you warm up adequately, if you've got enough blood in your muscles you're more likely to be able to force produce. Whereas if you've got like no bicep vein popping at all when you're about to lift weights, it's probably not a good look unless you're fat like me. So yeah, that's been my thing lately. It's just in between sets. You guys don't see it, but I'll just like work on my shadow boxing and get throw a few kicks in there. It's cringe, I know. One of the only benefits of having, or one of the benefits of having a home gym is you can do silly shit like this and there's no one here to judge me except for my dog and you guys. But if you're in a commercial gym, you start fucking shadow boxing in between sets. You get people looking at you going, what the fuck is this guy doing? Fuck. 12 and 10, not too bad. So I made a video about a week ago talking about why I think that machines are generally superior to free weights. Um, but there are some times where free weights are better for different people, for different reasons. In the case of the barbell overhead press, I think ultimately I feel that more than most variants of overhead presses. Granted, I've never really done much machine overhead presses. Maybe it's even better. But that's one of those instances where, for me, it would make little to no difference. Um, the barbell overhead press just simply hits it perfectly fine. I can really feel it. It's quite safe. I like the lift. It's not super technical. Um, 
yeah, unless you're doing a standing overhead press, that's a different story. So yeah, of course, sometimes there's times where free weights for many people make real no different. Granted, one of my arguments was when you first start a lift, there's a period of time where neurological adaptations are a limiting uh, factor. And so even, even right now, for example, because it is a technical lift, I'm weaker even though I'm not technically physically weaker. It's just my, I'm not as neurologically efficient at the barbell movement because it's more technical. And so for the next month, I probably won't get as much delt gain from the barbell overhead press simply because I'll be getting neurological adaptations. I'll be getting better at using all my muscle fibers. But either way, shit ain't that serious. I like the barbell overhead press. It's easily accessible. I don't have a machine option apart from maybe my Smith machine. But yeah, it's just like, you know, everything works. The purpose of that video was just to say that if you have the option for the more optimal thing, which oftentimes is the machine, then take it. That's just in my head. Oh! 